that's that's me. Can you see the my screen? Jakub, can you see? Uh, yes, if I can. All right. So what? So we will have a couple of projects associated associ associated with eigenvalues in, and eigenvectors. So I need to describe you what's that. So any of you has an idea what is eigenvector and eigenvalue? All right, if not, I will continue. OK, I will describe it step by step. So we have a square matrix A that multiplies vector X. And the result of this multiplication is some real value lambda times given vector. So this, this, uh, so uh, let's say given matrix, we can consider matrix of real values or complex values, usually has, has uh, certain sets of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So usually when you multiply vector by matrix, what happens is that you get another vector in another direction. Nevertheless, for certain, uh, it can happen that if, if X eigenvector, then the result of multiplication is the same vector, but with different length. And so this is the same vector times a number, times a number, and lambda is a number. So this number name is eigenvalue, and x is eigenvector. So there is a general procedure how to determine eigenvectors in, and eigenvalues from given matrix A. And this is called, such problem is called eigenvalue problem. So this is this is already defined eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And of course, usually we deal with matrices of finite size. And usually we deal with uh, with square matrices. But in principle, we can also consider infinite matrices and infinite vectors. But of course, we need to truncate them at some point. So at this stage, I only consider finite size. Uh, X vectors and finite size square matrices A. And how to. Uh, so here is uh, uh, the case of plotting vectors in uh, in Python. So you see there is matplot pyplot used. And uh, and then we can define vectors and we can plot them. So we will do these things in detail during a class, uh, exercises during labs. I will, I will move to procedure of computation of eigenvectors and eigenvalues of given matrix. So if you have this eigenvalue problem, A matrix times vector X is equal lambda times x. By the way, you know how to multi multiply matrix by vector. You know this from mathematical courses. Of, of course, we can do refresh it during during labs. So actually, uh, in order to determine eigenvalue, we have to solve the following equation. So this is uh, so we so this equation on this equation we 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 shift lambda times x vector on left side. So we got such equation as here. And this, so this is a matrix equation. So a vector, so a matrix, square matrix minus lambda times identity matrix. Identity matrix is a square matrix that has only ones at diagonal and zeros otherwise. So this is uh, identity matrix. So we have such equation and then this equation written here implies that determinant. So A minus lambda times I uh, matrix is, is also matrix. So determinant of this matrix is set to zero. So this, this is, so actually this will give you um, a prescription how to determine all uh, lambdas existing here. 
And here is the case of matrix. It has, so for, let us forget about the, uh, this lambda. So 0, 2, 2, and 3. So this is a matrix. You, you can place it. You have you can place it as here by such type of command. We'll exercise it. And then you know that it's determinant. We can also write this as modulus of such matrix. So this this is this is the way of writing determinant is set to zero. So you have minus lambda and three minus lambda on diagonal, and you have two, uh, two values of two at anti-diagonal of this matrix. And then it's well-known prescription how to compute determinant. Determinant is nothing else as multiplication of this term by this term minus, okay, so, so diagonal term times diagonal term minus two, two times two. So this is minus lambda because this first is minus lambda times three minus lambda minus four is, is equal to zero. So in two dimensional case of two dimensional matrices, you can compute these things analytically since you obtain quadratic equation. And this quadratic equation is minus lambda and there is minus lambda, so it is lambda square minus three times lambda minus four is equal to zero. So you know how to solve quadratic equation. Actually, we did it. And solving this quadratic equation gives you two eigenvalues, four and minus one. So lambda one and lambda two. And every eigenvalue will have its eigenvector, this x, the, 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 this x. And now we need to determine this eigenvectors. So having this condition as written here, we have I A matrix minus lambda times I is equal to zero. So this 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 set of two equations or just like a kind of matrix equation is it's written here. So we have uh, since so we, we pick up Lambda, lambda. So since we have two solutions of eigenvalues, we pick up lambda one. So we set lambda one is equal to four, and then this equation gives you minus four minus one on diagonal and two and two at on anti-diagonal. So this acts on eigenvector that has two components x y and x two, and the result is zero. Uh, so, so we, so we have, so we end up with two linear equations for x1 and x2. So, first equation is minus four times x1 plus two times x2 is equal to zero. And second value is second equation is two times x x1. So, this is this component. Uh, so, so two times x1 and minus one times x2 is equal to zero. So, we see that both equations this and this one give us the relation between x1 and x2 as following. So x1 is equal to 2 times x2, as x2 is equal to 2 times x1, sorry, this equation is obtained. And now you have a dilemma because in principle you have infinite set of uh, possibilities. So, so you can write this eigenvector x as k times 1, 2 vector. And usually we solve this case of infinite number of solutions by setting auxiliary condition that our vector is normalized, has normalized. So it has unit uh, length one. That's additional uh, things that we, we set it. Yeah, so this is the procedure how to compute eigenvector. And in the same, in the same way, we can compute another eigenvector corresponding to lambda 2 in, in the way as given here. And again, we can use this condition of normalized unit uh, length that is equal. So, so the length of vector is one. And, uh, and there is also interesting things that the vectors that are eigenvectors, but they come from different eigenvalues they are orthogonal, they're orthogonal. So the scalar product 
is equal to zero. So there is angle 90 degrees between them. So this is like in two dimensional case, but the same story applies to n dimensional case. So all eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal. And usually software provides you the, it has built in algorithm how to solve things. So it gives you automatically for given matrix, a set of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. But of course you can having, having a matrix of size two by two, uh, the results are analytical. Having matrix three by three, we end up with equation of third order, not second or third order, uh, with lambda uh, to the power of three as well, since we will have uh, three terms on the diagonal, uh, having lambda. And uh, equation of third order, you can solve it analytically, but the formulas are extremely lengthy, like one page for each of eigenvalue, but above, above three. So if we have matrix four by four in general, we cannot determine analytically all its eigenvalues. So things has to be computed numerically. That's how it is. Uh, all right, so this is the case of 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 this uh, of this uh, eigenvectors and this I, eigenvalue problem. An eigenvalue problem actually ap appears quite often among many, many, uh, you know, uh, cases. And uh, yeah, mm. so so I, I gave one of the tasks to one of the group that was I already gave my um, code in MATLAB which is all modified. You can say it's it's almost similar. It's very similar to Octave. And the task was to translate the code to Python. That's that's I think that's quite straightforward. But of course. I can assist a, a given person. With certain, uh, you know, um, uh, problems. Uh, uh, yeah, mm. then we already deal. With numerical differentiation. Uh, so far, and uh, so we expressed like like Piotr, he discretized a space into small pieces, and then, and then we we have approximation of derivatives. First derivative is approximated by two points, as as given here. So this is the, the most simple scheme. Actually. Uh, you can you can choose this so let's say you can choose those values left and right of, of a given central point or at the central point on the right and on the le left and central point so we have forward difference backward difference and central difference as specified here it's just to let you know uh, derivatives are connected with tyler series and that's why in principle, we can use more than two points for first derivative and more than three points for second derivative. I'm not going to discuss this in greater detail, but that's that's the way it is. So for example, here we have very instructive case. That first derivative is expressed by na its neighborhood. So we are at xj point, so j is just index. So we go two points to the left, one point to the left, and uh, one point to the left, and one point. Probably it's supposed to be here plus one, plus one, and so one point to the right, and two points to the right. So you can express first derivative with better accuracy by usage of four points. So we have already established the scheme how to how to generate uh, a recurrent relation. So this is like this is like difference equation. So so given point at 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 f prime xj depends on neighboring points. So this is a re recurrent re re relation. So we can upgrade the existing schemes and increase computational accuracy in greater detail. 
and uh, and you, you can test the efficiency of these differential schemes. So you, you know derivatives of certain functions, like cosine function has minus sine x, and you can compare analytical result with numerical result, and then you, you can get um, you can get uh, yeah uh, comparison, find a difference approximation and exact solution. So you can see how the error propagates uh, in these uh, schemes over here. Right. Uh, so that's that that's that's the way to do it. Uh, all right. Um, you can also approximate higher order derivatives as second order. So into body problem, there was a problem of second order derivative since acceleration is uh, derivative of position uh, second. Or, so d square over dt square with respect to position. So again, you can you can use it. So of course, the most kind of simplistic or some people will say it's a primitive, but we usually start from simplistic things usually. Using only three points for. Uh, so uh, so you der you compute derivative f prime prime x j and it uses three points, but you can use more points, of course. And so on and so on. So so you, you can study this material in greater detail. And uh, and you have to be aware that there is always numerical error coming because there is finite accuracy of, of computations. And sooner or later, this this um, this this will generate you some error. All right, and I also quite uh, OK, this the approximating higher order derivatives. I just try to find out this. Uh, OK, so this that's already done. Um, all right. And. Uh, right. Um, so I gave to one of the person the Schrodinger equation, but the Schrodinger equation was already formulated uh, in the code. But also you can use uh, symbolic computations in uh, greater detail. And uh, so you can make integration or differentiation of analytical functions as sine x, cosine x, and so on, leading to analytical formulas. So this also lies in the capabilities of, of Python. Right. Uh, yeah, I just tried to mm, go to some problems with differential equations because we already touched this. Uh, so. So this is, for example, equation for RLC circuit. It could be kind of treated in that way since we have second order derivative, first order derivative, and well, some constant values. Yeah, and uh, usually we can have equation for a heat flow, radiation flow, and uh, we can uh, have equation for shooting from the gun. So this is a bit similar to the case of falling body, but this is falling body with under certain angle. So we have, you know, this equation since we, we solve it, but in our case, G was depending on the distance. So here G is constant. So you have this equation for Y component. And then you have since you don't have a force in x direction it is uniform this is constant motion with constant speed in x direction then you can you can uh, determine how the body moves and this is the case of the simulation so that's quite uh, straightforward i would say and then you can try to solve various problems so for example you, you have an equation that describe the bullet coming from the gun you want to hit this point so you have to try in you have to change initial parameters of the simulation so you can uh, 
hit this point with this bullet. So that's also numerics. So you 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 can you can you can do it. You can do it. All right. Uh, we already did it. Numerical integration. I, I I remind you that we already did it. So we, in principle, we know how to solve um, differential 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 equations and uh, integ integral equations at some point. So this is this is the way we we did it. Yeah, I think you 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 know it. Now this is now I would mention about very specific case. Um, so here there is operation of taking derivative d square over dt square acting on on y. So this can be actually expressed by a matrix. If matrix as this one. It's multiplying this vector of positions. The result is uh, the result is is what is minus g. So 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 you can solve this equation by a differential equation. You can reduce its solutions to solutions of this matrix equation as as given here. So there is a matrix. This is like proper matrix. And it can occur in in a free folding body. It can occur in a Schrodinger equation. Doesn't matter. Whenever there is second derivative, you can write like that. And of course, you can determine this vector if you multiply both sides by inverse of this matrix. And this is what those people are doing. And here's a very simple Python code doing it. So you have this. Uh, um, so you said that this this matrix uh, this matrix by such for loop, right? So initially you define zero matrix and then you put ones here in certain places and then and then otherwise you put one minus one one and then you solve it you solve it. So you can get the uh, this equation of motion. Right, so um, yeah, here is the case of fourth order derivative uh, acting on uh, y. So in the most simplistic scheme, it has five neighbor five points from neighborhood, but of course, not always such numerical scheme is stable. So there could be numerical instability that arises. And what are the cases of numerical instability? It's simply if you make, for example, too big time step, uh, your simulation, uh, the result you obtain from the simulation can be much different from real uh, solution. And there are the methods to monitor this. That's why I ask you to compute mechanical energy of a system to see how it does change with time, with iteration, with uh, simulation step, with simulation time in a way. And you 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 have discovered that, let's say it does that it does uh, it does differ, it does it does change. It's supposed to be flat. It, it is not flat. So certain numerical error is 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 coming. And uh, but still, you can decrease this numerical error either by Improving differential scheme. I already introduced you some differential schemes today, or you can decrease simulation time. So let's say the value of depends on the purpose of your simulation, whether your simulation is rough evaluation or you need a very high level of exactness. But let's say if it's it deviates by five ten percent, it's somehow acceptable. If it deviates further more, it's not always fully acceptable right and also uh just to remind you uh, after our simulations we supposed to write the code to the the files uh, to, maybe code okay code is already written but let's say output of the simulation can be saved to a file and then then and then then we need to exercise this thing in um, in closer detail so here we just 
there is a prescription how to uh, save a text to a file. So at first we create file stream. So there is open a command and then we put the file name and file path. And then we have a so-called writing mode. So we, what, whatever exists with such name, as such file with such name will be deleted and overwritten by a new things. So this is writing mode. And then for, for five times, for I in the range five, we write, write F and this is a line. And then there's end of line is, 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 is with that. And so we, we got such result as, as given here, zero, one, two, three, four, right? This is the way to write into a file. We can append to existing file. So we have F is equal open again, Remember, you have to open the stream with a certain mode of operation. This is append, which means add, add to the existing file something. And here we, we add a line. This is another line. We add a line. And then, but we have always closed the stream. This is file stream. It's very important to close it. So then we add it, and that's such result. We can also read the existing files. So again, we define stream open. We put some path. And then we declare a reading mode. So we only read. And then here we, we read the whole content of the file. This is content. So this this so in a sense, this is a string. Content is a string. And here F close is closing the stream, but still the content does exist as another variable, and then we print out. And this is the result. And then we can check what's what type of variable, what the variable type is is content. We which put type, and this is string. So characterizes uh, uh, signs from the keyboard, ASCII keyboard, let's say, okay, from computer keyboard. We can also do read step by step. So this is reading mode again. We we we, we step. We read it and and then the, the the contents is specified as a vector of strings. So every vector kind of component is 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 separated here. So every line is separated. So that, then there is a list. So in principle, when you do simulation for certain purposes of automatization, it's good to read from a file. Simulation parameters from one file in a certain way and read the results of another file, and then you can get data and you analyze data with different things. All right, so 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 that's that's how it is. We will do this uh, during uh, take this text files during coming lab. Do you have any questions? Remarks? Okay, I will systematically I will systematically explain uh, the you know, every 